The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. This is the Wednesday edition, June the... I always have to think about these things. June the 27th, even though I write it about 20 times every day. Um, June the 27th. Um, and it's... Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to um, be able to join Steve Rhodes. First, he did a great hour, first hour, 9 o'clock till 10, as always. But then I was fortunate enough to join him in the 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock hour, which he usually does with Tom O'Brien, who's out there in the water somewhere enjoying himself. And I really hope he's taking a, just the uh, opportunity to have a wonderful break, which he certainly deserves. So I joined uh, Steve as a co-host, and what a gracious co-host he he. he, he turned out to be. Well, of course, I knew that would happen, but he was a very gracious host, and we were covering a number of things. Uh, one of the chart patterns that I was discussing is from 1932, from the low at 40, the Dow went up to 195, 196 in 1937. Can you imagine the news, the horrible, the terrible news Day in, day out, hour in, hour, hour out. What people felt in their homes, that was a real depression. And yet, the stock market made it slow. And then what happened is that all those regulations that were put into effect, and I spoke about, I wrote about this in, in the book, um, the chapter, Psychology of Investing, the chapter that I had in that particular book, chapter 13. Um, I spoke about how, the regulations constantly get changed because politicians always sit in the caboose. They're the ones that watch this. They sit there waiting to see which way the smoke is blowing. When they finally see which way it's blowing, they get out of the station and they jump in front. You know, Bill Clinton was one of the great ones to do this. Bill Clinton could, could land. You could parachute him anywhere. He would land and within maybe, what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds... You just sniff out exactly what was the right thing to say and what was the wrong thing to say, and he would just he would look you right in the eye and he'd say the right thing, and then the person next to them who had a completely opposite view, he'd look them right in the eye and say exactly the right thing, and each one would be nodding away saying yes, yes, yes. Politicians come in and change the regulations. When the horse is not only out the barn, it is now on the other side where you've got to start to figure out new regulations. So all those banker regulations that they came into effect with um, Roosevelt, they the ones that during the 1990s, and I remember writing about this in my, my service, my market line service, I kept saying, how on earth could the banks start to now be involved in real estate? How could the banks become all of a sudden, banks could, didn't have to separate everything. They, they became a, an all-encompassing medium, a money medium. And that's when all those regulations were... We have a person here, Elizabeth Warren, who's running for office, and the people keep asking me, what about Elizabeth Warren? I say, the perfect person at the wrong time. Where was she? She should have been in, in, in 1998, 1999, 2000. That's when we should have been herding everything in. So the chart shows one thing. You've got to learn to decipher, to look at the chart patterns. And that's what we try to do here at TFN. We try our very best to inform you, to give you knowledge, to give you techniques. Well, you know, Larry, the, uh, Steve has developed a whole bunch of techniques that he's put together and, and, and developed uh, just a way of looking at the markets. Tom has done that. You know, terrific work with volume, with expansion, with the Tiger Gotti, etc. You've got uh, Larry Pesavento. Larry comes on, and, and he his methodology is trade what you see. He has specific parameters. He could be saying, this is the number to look for. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and bam, that number comes in, and he puts the trade on. And then he puts his stops or buy stops accordingly. He teaches those techniques. We, you know, we talk, uh, Steve, uh, Steve uh, uh, Ken Shreve, when I was interviewing yesterday when I did Tom's show, Ken was talking about particular strictures and structures that he looks for. When, when you hear, um, you know, each one of our, 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 our hosts, when you hear Kate Stolter talking about 
her small cap stocks, what she looks for and why. We have this webinar coming up. Seven of us are giving this webinar. If you, if you buy your Tiger Dollars, you're invited to come in for free to get these educational um, wonderful one and a quarter, one and a half hour programs that are going to be coming up. So please consider going to the front page and, and each one of us has spent our lives working on our techniques, which we give out here. Some of them we keep proprietary, and we keep them for Master Trader Series and things like that because it is really important to have the one-on-one, -on -one, to be able to really grasp it. But a, a majority of our information we give out, we show the techniques live. They are right there for you to see. And um, I just wanted to get that out the way. I wanted to say it because it's on my mind. I wanted I. I, I love teaching. I think we all here love teaching. And again, when you listen to the options hour, uh, you got Victor coming on. That that information is just amazing to be able to to get it and to be able to use it. Even Nick Nico uh, Friday, when I listen to him about health, that is stuff. Guilty stuff, I must say, especially some usually eating a sandwich at that particular point. But it's really useful information. It is tremendous information. All right. The Dow's up 79 at 12,614. The S&P's up 10 at 1330. The Comp Index, let me just get rid of this phone call. The Comp Index is at, let me just squeeze it all the way up. There we go. The Comp Index is up 21 at 28.75. Gold is unch. Uh, gold, gold, gold is not unch. Gold, yeah, unch at 15.75. Silver's uh, unched at about 334. Uh, crude oil is at 80.26, up 90 cents. And bonds, and this is going to be important, bonds are almost unch. And the volatility index that I was talking about when uh, I think it was Dave who called from Boston, uh, when Dave called, the volatility index was still up in the high 19s at 19.74. Um, close to that 20, 20 level so that's going to be very important to monitor because this is down channel you can see it if you look at tiger one you'll see the 120 minute chart that down trend that sell zone has been a repellent if in the next two days for whatever i don't care what the reason is if the the vix index goes to the 21 or higher level this market is going down. It's going down quite sharply. If it's able, the VIX goes down to the 18s and bonds actually pull back with the dollar. Do, that's Dolly, Vixi, and Bondi. If the three bears pull back, you'll see a really nice rally. I think there's a lot of resistance in the 12,000 in the Dow at 12,000. Uh, what was the high today? 12,630. Yep, the 12,050s I mentioned for my subscribers in my opening call. That 12,000. Especially the 12,680 to 12,690 area. That's going to be really strong resistance. If the Dow powers through that, that's going to push this S&P up and the, and, and, and the other indexes. So, got that out the way. First caller online is Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, my question is on Ralph Lauren. Yes. Um, I'm short a small amount right now. I think this is uh, setting up to be a really good short, but is it too early to put on another uh, another uh, slug right here? I like this. That there's this Roman candle that that's just crying out to me uh, back in August of 2011. So I wanted to get your take on. Uh, let me go to that one. This is on the daily chart? Yeah, August, August 9th, 2011. Whoops. Whoa, let me go all the way back. August, August, August. Oh, yes. So th that was the takeoff bar. Uh, folks, there's something that I, I'm going to start mentioning more and more here. I use volume as unbalanced volume, OBV. That's that green line that you can see in my work right there in between, on the stochastic... Um, um, platform right here this is the lower uh, chart area but i'm going to be start i'm going to start, i've mentioned oh over the years i've mentioned periodically that i use volume in a certain way at a certain time there's something that i call the volume climax and that volume climax is really important all it says is that it was so much selling at a certain point it could actually turn out to be buying sometimes but basically it's very often selling that it creates an inflection point that says 
the price has met a level of support, and that level of support can take the price up in time, usually in price as well, but definitely in time. And that's exactly what you saw in Ralph Lauren RL on the, the low bar of the 9th of August. But let me go back to something else. I've done a lot of work over the, the, the last couple, many weeks. In fact, it's a couple of months now, and I've been talking about my impression is, <clears throat> has been that when the apparel sector, the restaurant sector, and the auto parts sectors, the ones that had done absolutely spectacularly up into the first quarter of this year, start to break down, that was when my... And I'm doing this empirically, just on the chart patterns themselves. That is when I suspected we could see the greatest vulnerability in the Dow and the S&P and the Qs and the IWM, in other words, in the key indices. I believe we've started to see that, and I've been trying to choose um, certain stocks that would be uh, kind of a beta, a, a, a parallel with price movement if the market was to go down. But in fact, it turns out that some of the stocks are quite independent within the sectors. As you can see, AZO in the auto sector is down very sharply in points, but AAP is just knocking the ball out of the park in terms of percentage to the downside. That's uh, 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 auto, auto parts, advanced auto parts. So, and all is the same thing. But that's the same that's happened. Now, Ralph Lauren was a stock that just seemed immune to anything until it made the doji top at 182.48 in March of this year, I think that the that Ralph Lauren, like many of these stocks, is making what I call a hat trick top. That means when I start to see that the monthly is about to give a sell signal, I check to see where the weekly is because the weekly will give it usually before the monthly, and that gave the, a silent doji a candle on the 9th of March, the week of the 9th of March, and then another doji candle on the 16th at 182.82. Let me just see if there are any round numbers. No, I don't see any round numbers. And then the, the daily chart had given a pretty serious sell signal. It started off uh, at 178.47 the 8th of February, but it confirmed at a peak G top um, and that was on the 14th of March at 182.48. Let me just look around here for some round numbers. No, I don't see any round numbers. Well, it was just purely the candle. And then there was that huge gap that it filled. I think that that was the start of a hat-trick top with the daily <clears throat> on the 15th of March started the, the, the domino effect. It took the weekly confirmed the following week the 23rd and now the monthly is giving with the nine period moving average underneath the, the the price under the nine ema a hat trick top price and momentum and time to the downside i'll tell you what i'm thinking in a moment and i think you've got a great short and i'm going to say add to the short but i'll tell you how i'll be right back basil chapman 877-927-6648 you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on chinese stocks the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives risks charges and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing the prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. Stock market corrections are the number one reason that a buy-and-hold investment strategy produces the poorest results, and I have 73 years of data that proves it. Now, the good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time period has been spent in recession. And if you're one of the 70% of American households relying on their 401ks and IRAs for retirement, you need the single strategy that is bulletproof against the turmoil of our stock markets. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com under Breaking News, click on Success is a Numbers Game to receive this must-have free report. This bulletproof strategy may be days away from giving the next signal. Don't neglect your retirement, and don't neglect this signal. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFN.com to order your free copy of Success is a Numbers Game today. Implement the disciplines contained in this report, and success will be yours for the taking. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a one-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, uh, Dow's up 70, S&P's up 9, and we are on with uh, Mike in New York talking about R Ralph Lauren call. So, uh, Mike, you have a position now short and it's working for you, correct? That's um, right, yes. That's right. Okay. So this is what I'm doing. I've just done a little work on my weekly chart. I have a target for Ralph Lauren um, somewhere in the 121 to 117 area as a first target, and then the 111 is the second target, the 200-period exponential moving average. And my... Could be wrong about this because if it suddenly rallies and it goes above 160 in the next three weeks, um, the timeline will be pushed out. Not the price so much, but the timeline. However, I'm going to make a suggestion. If the market closes down today and for whatever reason with the health care bill, whatever it is that the, the Supremes come out with, I don't care what it is. If tomorrow, instead of rallying up 130 to 165 points, the Dow is down about 60 to 90 points. I suspect that Ralph Lauren will be one of those that really takes it on the chin because it's like this economic play of the auto parts and the restaurants. It's suddenly the suddenly we're looking at the uh, discretionary income area being vulnerable. So I'm going to suggest you actually add to your position a small position now, just a small position, okay. and then you put in another position. You put in a uh, just this is just good until cancelled at between one forty seven to 
to 149 because the nine period moving average in the weekly is at 148.21. You put in another bid right there and you just let it sit for a little while, not too long, because if the price of Ralph Lauren at 137, if it goes to 135 to 133 in the next few days, then I don't actually want to see it rally all the way to 148. Uh, I think in this particular case, you'll have your two positions. You might even want to add to those positions. It's right now that it's most vulnerable. And the reason I say that is that on the weekly, ch on the 120 minute chart, it's just made two M formations, two H formations with a big M, and the larger one has tremendous force to the downside and is cracking as we speak, and the stochastic's still at 23%. I think the stochastic's going to go to 9% or 6%. So that's my, that's my thinking here. Um, and as for a stop... Um, on, a, the sh on a, any new position you add, the stop should probably be the high of the day today, a penny above the high of today, 141.07. But more importantly is if it just suddenly stalls and it rallies today and it gets to about 139, then, um, then you keep that position and you have to wait for that bounce to the 148 area where you'll add. And that added position, the total of the added position can have a stop of about 149.50 to 150.70, somewhere around there. So that's your risk, and it's, it's a big risk in percentage terms, but all of this would be with smaller positions. And I would, as I say to you, I would probably say I'd add to the position if today the general market, instead of being, or well, it was up, uh, what was it? Uh, that was the Dow up 70 something just now, 80 something just now. So if the Dow is only up 30 points later today, any position, if you add it to right now, that position should be comfortably um, uh, giving you a, a comfortable gain. That allows you a little bit of leeway tomorrow if there's a sudden gap up in the morning. But I, my target on this is quite a bit lower, as you can tell. My target on this is between the 115 and 111 area in the next, I would even say, in the next four or five weeks. The, 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 this candle on May 22nd, is that meaning meaningful in any way? Uh, the candle May 22nd. May, 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 May 22nd. Yes, that, that is a candle because that candle is like, what, what, you know the candle I talk about, the wide wick doji? This is not quite like that, but it represents exactly the same aspect. You see what happened is my rule of thumb is that it goes below it, and within two days it could get right back to test the wick, to test the body of the candle, and look how many times it did that. And then what happens, it usually breaks, and if it breaks toward the previous low, that's the way it's going to go, and that's exactly what this did. So that my rule of thumb with the long-legged doji kind of applies to that doji. That wick on the outside, both the upside and the downside, is less important than the body of the candle because that body acts like a magnet for a while. It shows you the price movement here is the biggest price movement it's had for a while, and it closed indecisively on the 22nd of May between 161 and 147. That's a big uh, that's that's a huge uh, differential. So what you're looking at is that the the body of the candle becomes it's indecisive. It has to touch it a few times and then it breaks away. So All right, that thank helps you very you. much. Thank you very much for calling, uh, folks. We've got a commercial coming up eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'd love to hear from you, and we'll be right back and we'll go through some of these uh, apparel stocks when I get back. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits range from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN has just launched our most exciting sale ever. If you purchase any amount of Tiger Dollars before Sunday, June 24th, you'll receive access to seven live 90-minute webinars hosted by each of our technicians here at TFNN. Not only do you get a 20 to 30% bonus on your purchase as you normally do with Tiger Dollars, but with this one-of-a-kind offer, you get over $1,000 in added value completely free. Each 90-minute live webinar usually sells for $149, and you get all seven of them absolutely free. Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Ken Shreve, Dave White, and Kate Stalter, you get all seven classes completely free. Whether you're an experienced trader or you're completely new to the markets, this sale is perfect for all levels of investors. Don't miss out on our best Tiger Dollar sale ever. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today and purchase your Tiger Dollars before June 24th. Don't wait and risk missing out on this one-of-a-kind offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, Basil Chapman in connection with the 877-927-6648 um, is the number to call. But in connection with the apparel group that I was looking at, so we've got Ralph Lauren, which I think has made a hat-trick top. Um, guess, um, guess Inc., is has made a top at use that same technique I discussed the fractional uh, fractional two bars in the monthly chart with the fractional higher high or lower low uh, fractional higher high or fractionally lower higher high I don't know lower high the two bars the two parallel bars it made on in November of 2010 went to 49.53 the following month it went to 49.50 just what 37 cents higher. And that was a top at peak D for gas, and it's come down, and the target I have, it's at 28.98. If it breaks under 24 in the next two, three weeks, 19.90 is the target on the downside. If we're looking at uh, JWN, JWN, isn't that Nordstrom? Yeah, Nordstrom. Nordstrom. Nordstrom has made... Um, a, a, a peak F, I believe, in the, in the monthly chart, top at 57.75. So it went from 56.75 to 57.75, uh, April, May of this year. Hattrick top, I, all I can say is the Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle of the August of 2011, if it gets into the midpoint of this wick, if it gets into the 42.22 area, that's five points lower in the next three, four, five weeks, it's going to test the low of 37.28 and probably go a little lower. It made in the weekly chart, it made a peak E, doji, candle, high, 
this is JWN trading at 47.18 down $1.44. Now, this is always very negative for me. When there's a rally that can only go to an A, a peak A or a B, and then fails and goes to a B minus, that's very negative. And that says you've got to watch this very closely because just checking to see here. Yeah, because if um, if it cl closes under 47 in the next two days, it's just a really good chance it's going to test the doji low of 46.27, the low of the 5th of June. Um, and, and is an, an Taylor stores made a peak E top of 32.49. It looks like a dreaded H pattern. So all of these stocks will change the pattern if they have a maybe a 3% rally in the next few days, but Anne is, had, a, had a triple top at the 29s. And look at this. It's coming down sharply. Peak E in the Chapman wave in the, in the weekly. Not good. This, these are hat-trick tops as far as I'm concerned. It's talking about time and price. We do months before they have a really good rally. Uh, this is the way I'm looking. 23.12. Is it 24.24? And Taylor, A-N-N. -N. If it cracks under, well, if it keeps coming down, 23.12 is the 200 period moving average support. But actually the real candle is the, is the body of this long wicked candle of the th week of the 3rd of February, 22.14 to 25 round number high. That's the candle that I'd be looking at. Then there's another one, someone said UA. Oh, let's see what UA is doing. Oh, Lulu, let's look at Lulu. So UA has gone a little extra. I think I'm calling this a G. Yep, I'm calling this a G. <clears throat> uh, and calling it an E. So Under Armour, there's nothing wrong with the chart yet. But my on-balance volume for this month is turned down. That's the green line. The MACD is flattening out and stochastic is turning down, but still at 89%. All I can say is if in July, if Under Armour UA, trading at 93.75, closes under 88 in the month of July, closes at the end of July, that will be a big negative. It will be the first time that it's closed under that since it broke out above the nine-period exponential moving average uh, in, wow, September of 2009. So this is a double top. If you look at the verticality of the lines, look the vertical line here and the vertical line there, you'll, you'll see that Under Armour, UA, um, made a high in April, the week of April the 20th at 102.86, opens at round number 97, and then pulled back, went to a higher high. It went to a high last week of 107.86, and I'm just checking something here. And the MACD and the stochastic were completely lower. So completely lower. That's not, that's not English. Much lower. Much lower. So if um, UA, Under Armour, closes, especially on Friday, if it closes anywhere around the 92, but if it takes out on Friday the 88.60 level, You've got a weekly sell signal that goes immediately to a sell mode, a peak G in the, in the weekly chart, and you've got the, 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 a strong suggestion that there'll be a lower high in July, which makes it a peak E top, and you've got to be real careful in that monthly chart, especially if in the month of July, stochastic breaks under 80%. So, um, we have a caller online. We've got Dan North Reading. Hi, Dan. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Good. I wanted to um, look at GWW, which um, I was thinking looks like it's making possibly a long-term top as well. I had uh, bought a put on it a while back, but I was too early, and then now it kind of looks like it's stuck in this trading range on the daily. Okay, so now let's look at this. Folks, I, I, there are techniques that you can learn just from looking at, at the charts that we show here at TFNM. In my chart, you'll see I spoke about... Under Armour a moment ago, the nine period moving average in the uh, week and the monthly chart, it was like it was like a base of support. It walked the line all the way up. Well, on the way down, it becomes a roof, or a roof, as some people say. Now, what you've got is GWW, WW Granger, Appliances and Tools, breaks out above the nine EMA, April of two thousand and nine. 
And then it holds it, and the fast-moving average of the MACD holds it all the way. Look at the U-turn, and this is exactly what uh, I'm sure Dan's looking at in the monthly chart. The U-turn in the, in the fast-moving average of the MACD is very sharp. And the price, at this point, the month has still got a week to go. The month has still got a week to go. No, it's just got a few days to go, right? End of the month is, yeah, we've got a few days to go. And the month is finished, and the nine, it's under the nine-period exponential moving average for the first time that would be on a closing basis since it broke out back in April of 2009. I concur. I believe everything about this chart is saying upside is limited. That's not to say that I've got any sell signal yet technically in the, in the monthly chart, but it did make a 221.84 high um, in March, and then 20, 221 round number high in April, and that's easy. If this goes over 221, certainly if it goes over 222, it's very positive and it's going even high, even higher. But at this particular point, I don't think so. Now, if you look at the left side, right side price time match from the 166 uh, low of uh, the week of the 4th of, of November, I've got a price time match that says... If, first of all, on the upside, if W, uh, w Granger, GWW, trading at 104.47 up a dollar and two cents right now, if it takes out 191.59, it could have a little bit further to go. Then the real resistance is in the 199 area. So that's your risk. If you're using options, it's something completely different to being to being short. You know what I mean? So yeah. would you use, would you use options or would you actually uh, go short? Well, I, I was thinking I might dabble in another put if it got back up to that, you know, one ninety area. Oh, okay, I think so it that, might that, go higher, huh? Great. Okay. I just want to know your thinking. Okay, if you want to use a, a put option, this is my recommendation. The daily chart is showing a choppy sideways move. The weekly chart held so far the diagonal, what I call the Chapman wave, inside wedge. I usually make this cyan color, and I usually make it a dashed line, because all it is is just a support line, but it becomes a target line, and that target line has a price uh, match, time match of the week of the 27th of July, at 168 to 164, that would be 166 would be my target right there. So it'll start failing to do that, yeah, of course, if it keeps rallying. But that means it has to go over 190.70. Let's call it 191 in the 9 EMA. Here's my recommendation. <clears throat> if you're doing a put hold off just a moment, let it, let it play out a little bit more, and I'll tell you why. Because if it starts to pull back, it's at 184.40. If it goes to 182, those two points are not going to make a very big difference. It's like 30 cents or maybe even less on your on your put, right? Yep. It won't be much. So I'm prepared to risk that 30 cents. I would rather say to you, wait to see how it hits 187.44, if it hits 187.44. If it closes above that, hold off. Then you've got time. We'll talk about it Friday. We can even talk about it next Monday. But if it starts to fail... And it gets to the 183 to the 182 level in the next two days. Start one position on a put, but you well, don't. I would not do it for. Let's see, we are. Oh yeah, you can do it for July because that'll be at least a full three weeks. Yeah. So yeah, so that would be July, and that's exactly how this should be working. If it's going to fail, do what I'm looking at. It's going to break under last week's low of 177.33. And it should do that, wow, it should do that by Monday afternoon or this coming Tuesday afternoon, say in about three, four days' time. Okay. So I hope that helps you. But so far, it, it, there's a little rectangle formation in the weekly chart that says it could stay in a trading range a little longer. That's why I'm saying to you, hold off a little bit, let it tell you, because if it goes under 183, that's probably going to be negative action as the MACD and the daily starts to decline. If it goes above 187, it'll improve the stochastic, and you've got time to think about it. And in that case, you'll be talking about 80 cents to a dollar difference in the put, and I'd rather have you have the best price. Right, right. Just okay, one quick thing, just as you're signing off, I want to look at the 120-minute chart. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, E. Um, 
I think you, if I, my guess, if I'm, it's just a guess, my guess is it's going to be just under 183 and that you'll implement it. Let's see how the market tells you, how this, how this tells you. Thanks so much for calling. I always appreciate it. Thanks. Dan in North Reading, Dow's up 100, uh, Dow, Dow's up 88, S&P's up 1170. Now, let's go to something else. V, uh, VF, is there someone on the line? Do I have someone? No, I don't. VFC, what is that? VFC, oh, VF Core. VF Core is another one. Been a, sp oops, a spectacular winner. Just walked the nine period exponential moving average. Also in the retail apparel area, I believe. Um, this is the first time it's starting to test that nine period moving average intra month as if it wants to close under it. And the MACDs, nothing wrong with MACD yet, but it is turning down stochastic still at 87%. I have to tell you, I think the panel area is telling you, this is one of the reasons why I'm, you know, I, boy, I've been trying to put this together. You've got Toll Brothers, Len, uh, Lenar, you've got these home builders screaming to the upside. This rotational market is going sector by sector, just ripping apart the stocks that were the great winners and allowing the stocks that were the great losers to come back. But it's when there's a sudden... When you start reading the paper that the housing sector is back, the housing sector is back, that's like in the old days. We haven't seen it for a long time, but in the old days when we used to get these two, three-month recessions, and then all of a sudden you read in, the, in Wall Street Journal, economists say recession is over. I, I couldn't tell you how many times that was the exact peak D or E top that I was getting to say, oops, we're going back down for a, for a couple of weeks. So... I'm watching this rotation because my thinking was that if the uh, retail sector, especially the auto parts, um, started to pull back, and then you saw the, re the restaurants and the apparel, that is, the, those are the latter two are discretionary income. When discretionary income starts to fail, uh, to fail to, to perpetuate the, the buying, Normally, the markets are highly vulnerable. That's number one. And if I, if I look at the, um, I just wanted to mention before I forget, cores, which I know I heard Kate Stolter talking about a, a little while ago, um, and, and she was highly favorable. I don't know if she has the stock or anything about it, but at the time she said this is one of those stocks that really has, has something going for it. Um, she had liked it at the time, and it's done very well. So this is Michael Kors Holdings Apparel here as well, the very select area of the apparel group. So I'm watching this one closely because it hasn't gone back to the 50.69 high that it made in leg A up in the, in the monthly chart. So this is going to be one of those clue stocks that tells me, okay, the last of the, of, of the ones, the sexy ones, is starting to, to pull back. Now, I just wanted to do this because I'm going to go through my overview for the market. Um, and what I'm looking at, and that overview says that in the monthly chart, in the monthly chart, if you look at this pattern that I call the inside wedge support level, and this is the weekly chart, you will see that there is a chance for two things to happen, there always is. The market can either go up or it can go down. So I have to say, aha, let's find out what are the parameters. What would you be looking for to say it's going to go higher? And what would you be looking for to say it's going to go lower? I'm going to discuss that in my, my techni technique together with my monthly chart of the, of the Dow when we get back. And don't forget, another great day. Oh, I forgot Dave White is one of our great technicians. Dave White, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and then 4 o'clock till 6, we have those subbing for the Tom O'Brien. And uh, I'll be back straight after this break, and I'll be talking about the parameters of the Dow that I'm looking at. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. 
I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York stock exchanges under the symbol GBG. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. Don't forget, stay tuned for Larry Pesavento straight off this. Now, let's go to the Dow. Um, one of the reasons why I have not wanted to trade the indices, like the Q's or the QID or the Diamonds or DIA or the DDM or the DXD, the, the longs and the shorts, is I wanted to be very specific about the stocks that I liked on the long side. Now, I happen to miss, we we in GE and we got stopped out for a 1% loss, two, 20 cents. Uh, it's a shame that I, I didn't keep the stop, my original stop, because it was acting very well, and it's acting very well today, and that's important. Um, but our shorts are doing really well. Um, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when I was doing on Steve's show, we do have AZO as a short. Um, for a while, we've been in and out, but we still we did manage to get a great position. Um, which is down $18, and um, 
to death just today. And uh, uh, CMG, uh, I didn't expect that to have two in one day, which is down $15. It was down actually $18 something at some point. But it's just telling me a story. So this is what I'm looking at. Stock selection. I had an email from uh, one of our TF analysts uh, who asked me, he says, I, I heard your voice in Steve Rhodes. I thought my system had problems and was overlapping for the two shows. I kept refreshing my system. And the question is, um, uh, there it is. The, uh, the uh, E-minis, uh, peak F uh, up uh, 20 handles from the one trading day to the next. I keep getting stopped out. But, you know, the, the real issue is, I'm waiting to get the position, and probably I'll be looking at the short side. I don't know. I'm not going to pre-plan anything like I was talking about the Dow in 1932 to 1937. If you just ignored the news and traded that, you would have made a fortune, five times your money. But I'm looking at this, and what I'm saying is uh, the Dow is making a pattern that makes it real clear. If it takes out today's low of 12,450, if it closes below it, then that pattern, the dreaded H says, if there is a weak Thursday, Thursday is really weak instead of being strong, which I think some people are anticipating. If it's really weak, then I'm prepared to say, great, now I know that there's a directional move that's probably going to take place, and the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly is probably going to become the roof, become the ceiling, and we start heading down. The MACD hasn't shown any sign of strength. It is trying to flatten out. Stochastic's only at 43% and flattening out. So far, there's not, though I have to wait for Friday at 4, but so far, it's not a great sign, okay? On the upside, I like that GE is moving up. I like that the home builders are moving up, but it's becoming more and more selective. Most importantly, I want the XLF and the banks to move higher, and then I'll say, okay, we've got more room for the upside. So I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, if, there, if the market takes, if the Dow takes, at 12,898.94. In other words, if it goes above, if it goes to the 12,900 area, I believe that we could very well go higher, at least in the shorter term. So those are my parameters. The volatility index has started to pull back. It is now at uh, volatility index. Where did I put it? It's at 19.59. It's gone down 20 cents in just the, the, the hour or two that we've been talking. So if the volatility index continues to pull back and bonds pull back, bonds are still higher. TLT is up 10 cents. If they pull back, if in other words, my three bears, Dolly, Vixie, and Bondi, dollar volatility index and bonds pull back, I, and, and the market does actually move to the upside because if you consider what we've been doing here, after the smash that we had to the downside from the high and the Dow of 12,898 on the 19th, so far, this is the pathetic rally. But then you look at it a little closer, you say, wait a minute, it held the 200-period moving average. The, the MACD is still positive. It could make an M formation. And the stochastic is the one, the weak link here. So those are the parameters. I'm making it real clear. Our stock selection for me is important. I'll go to the indices as soon as I get clarity here. So thank you for being here. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock to do Tom's show Eastern Time. Otherwise, Friday at 11 o'clock, I'll do my Tiger Technician. Hour. Stay tuned for Larry and stay tuned for Dave White and Are you looking